Hello, I'm Malcolm Haslett. And I'm Janice Baker. How much is your water heating costing you? And Jeff the dog, next on our time. Voice is still, it's getting better, it but is getting it's better. taking time. I know, you're time still talking. Time on my hands, you in my heart. <laughs> Do you know, um, last year we had Leith Jarvis on, who is an independent electrical electricity consultant. Right. And we were going to talk about hot water services and what they cost. And the time has come to ask exactly those questions as we welcome Leith Jarvis to our time. Welcome back. Thank you, guys. <laughs> how much is uh, how much does it cost to have hot water in your home? How what does that sort of work out in your general electricity bill? If um, in the average bill, and there's no such thing, um, sure, you can probably say that 25 to 30 percent of your bill is hot water or heating of water. So you have to start lighting a fire under yes. a copper, mm. yes. like my mother used to do. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, most Years people ago. like a hot shower, Malcolm. Yeah, but yes. But you do in the winter. <laughs> yes, yes. But Not... it is a big part of your bill. It's the second it, biggest part guess, of your bill. Yeah, well, I guess that's understandable. Um, so how much does it cost to just run a shower? Because so many of us like to stay in there for quite a while. That's another issue. But if um, you have the average shower... What's that? Somewhere between five minutes and a half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, generally, you're looking at about 50 to 70 cents a shower. Right. It's not so it's, but, but it's something you don't think about. If no. you've got a family of six and they're in there for half an hour each... Well, we used to have it. the boys aren't home anymore, but, yeah, they Your smelly spend boys. a lot of time in no, the shower. No, there's a good way around that. <laughs> While they're in the shower, you just turn the water heater off. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. But um, I know my son, my youngest son, has two showers a day because of the job that he does. He gets dirty? He has a sh shower in the morning, mm. obviously, to wake him up, and then a shower after work. That's fair enough. So that, I usually that do better. that. Do you? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh, if you're a motor mechanic, something like that, yeah. you do need the two showers a day. Yeah. Mm. And that's a special so that occasion. So would add up. But the average punter needs one shower a day. But, you know, if that just cost a dollar a day and you had a house of four, mm -hmm. there's $4 possibly up to 6 to $8 mm. a day multiplied by seven days a week, mm. suddenly... Mm. Well, that number I just gave you uh, roughly adds up to about 60 cents a quarter, that's 90 days, for one person to have a shower. Right. So if you've got four people, work it out. It's, it's so... A bit. And a bath, then. <laughs> oh, no, the bath uses more water, generally. Yeah, I was say, unless yeah, you, you have just want to fill a bath. wet your legs or no, something. No, if you're going to fill a bath up, and some yeah. people prefer to have a bath than yeah. they do a shower. But a quick shower's cheaper. Yeah. Very old fashioned though, isn't it really? Mm. Get a spa bath. Um, <laughs> so when the replacement time comes for your water heater, mm -hmm. what um, what's the best sort of heater to get? Well, the question I'll ask, and this is important before we start that, is Janice, what sort of water heater do you have? I don't know. A big one? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Malcolm, what sort of water heater do you have? I have uh, a round, a, a roof in the ceiling cavity, one. And that means nothing, does it? <laughs> oh, it does to me, because I know... The big issue is, it's Christmas Eve or Easter or the long weekend and your water heater suddenly dies. Yep. And then you say, I need a new water heater and I need it now. So you ring the plumber and what you do is you end up replacing whatever what you've you... got with yeah, that. The same. And that's the danger, because what you've got may not oh, suit you. I see so what you've point. got to do is select what you want next time it goes. In other words, do a bit of homework... Mm. So when it does go, um, you know what you want yeah. and you can say, Mr Plummer, can I please have one of those instead, please? So how long would the average water heater last? In this, on Port Adelaide, uh, about nine years on average. But is that common everywhere, do you think? No. Uh, interstate, uh, perhaps there's not as many minerals in the water. Uh, as a place like Sydney, it'll be double that to be heating for 18, 20 years. Oh, right. So it's our uh, dirty uh, water. Uh, Again, I'll, I'll keep it local. Port Lincoln has got Todd River water and it's four years at each tank away. If you're in Mount Gambia, it fills up with limestone and you end up with a big brick instead of a water heater. Right. Uh, so, yeah, it depends where you are. Right. Okay. If you're on a farm so and it's think... down water, that's the other one. Yeah. So is it good to have perhaps a water purifier? You know, yeah, a filter. Yes. A filter. Yeah, that's a, that's a good Never idea. Never thought of that. Yes. Did you think of that? Never thought of that. <laughs> so 
go and look at, find out what your water heater is, uh, get some advice if you're not sure what it is, but then you've got to see what suits you. Yep. So what you've got to do is, the first question you ask yourself is, why wouldn't I go solar? Yep. Because solar, for nine months of the year, costs you nothing in energy. Mm. Water, yes, because it's the sun. It's only those two or three months in the winter well, that really you cold. may need to boost it with yep. uh, electricity or gas. You may not be able to have um, solar uh, on, uh, because the roof's the wrong angle or to the sun. Or in an apartment or something. Yeah, apartments, uh, the roof is shaded by trees, all the rest mm. of it. So the second choice, if you're looking at running costs and efficiency, you really got to look at these fancy um, instantaneous gas hot water services. They're just a little... Because they just heat up the water you use. They heat up the water you use and that's it. I They're... always understood they were more expensive than... Damn. No, no, because uh, the big tank um, is full of water and it's heating all the time. Yes. They only use the water they use. That's what you've got, I think. A big tank? No. <laughs> <laughs> Instantaneous. I think that's I what... You, I think that's no, what... I so. If you said. haven't got the solar, they're the best one to have. The only issue with them is... I've got solar. Yeah. We've got solar. I know that much. I was out in the sun today. I got solar. You're really too. coming up well here, aren't I am you? A, I know I've got solar. I don't, can't tell no. you any better. Uh, but honest people have no idea. No. They honestly the don't. The only thing with the instantaneous one is it heats up and then it goes through to your shower. It takes a while for the water to go through and heat up properly. So you are waiting a bit longer for the hot water to come through and it does take a while to You're ramp wasting up. water. Wasting water, and it's what you call dead water. In other words, it's in the pipes and it's not used. Okay. So uh, there's that issue. But generally, they're, they're cheaper to run. The price of gas is going up, so that's another issue yeah. you've got to keep an eye on. And I guess, too, de uh, depending on the size of the family. Absolutely. What mm. you would choose to have? I would choose. Um, well, can I deal with the third water heater and we'll go on to that? Sure. Yeah, because the third one would be the heat pump. Now, the heat pump's basically a refrigerator in reverse. All it does is, you know how a refrigerator takes the heat out of the food and, and it becomes cool? Cooler. It does it in reverse. A heat pump takes the heat out of the air and heats the water. Well, just so people know what you're talking about, we've got some pictures here mm -hmm. of these. So, let's have a look at the water heaters, first of all. Yes. So, this is the, on, the, on the roof, obviously. Yeah, that, that is a high-line system and the tank and uh, the panels are on the roof, you do have to have a strong roof so it's yeah, really heavy. to support it. Well, it's water's got... heavy, Yes, isn't it? And it is heavy, so, and if you haven't got the right structure, it might not be the one. So there. if you didn't have a strong roof, this sort would be better for you? Because uh, yes, because the tank's at the ground level and there's a little pump that just pumps up onto the... And just keeps it going? Yes, it just keeps it going. Yeah. Right. So that's a good system. Yeah. The gas ones are more expensive, but they're, they're very good. OK. Uh, so let's, let's just talk about these, because I've heard of water-saving shower heads. This looks like a good back scrub thing. You can <laughs> it does look like a massage. It does. Is that a massage one or not? No, just a... No, I don't no. think so. The water-saver shower heads, if you go to purchase one, some people call them a AAA shower head. The modern term is uh, a star rating, mm -hmm. a three-star. They've changed it, but it means the same thing. The water is restricted. Now, the water in your... The, your taps is usually uh, 20, 30 litres a minute. Right. This will reduce it to something like nine or six. Oh, I could play the trumpet. Very well done. I never thought I could. All that talent. Um, <laughs> and on, you so can see it's restricted. Yes, yeah, so that was a bit of a hard push. <laughs> mm -hmm. Don't oh, you hurt your larynx. It's even more. <laughs> Instead of talking. Yes, yeah, stop it. <laughs> well, well done, Malcolm. Yeah. I'll start me off. That was almost going. musical then. It yes, was. It was. Yeah. Nearly. But it's... Uh, it will restrict the flow, but it doesn't suit all water heaters. So you must check that it's compatible with your water heater, particularly right. those instantaneous ones. Got you. So mm. everyone's different. Mm. Like, are there any personal characteristics like age or sex that make a difference with water uh, use? Yes. Uh, first of all, ladies, people of the lady persuasion, tend to have a hotter shower, about two degrees different to a man. That's, really? that's the average, yeah. Have the lady will come out the shower all pink. Right. Because the guys tend to have it a little cooler. So that, that's an interesting point. Um, most knew? people, it's a five, ten minute shower. If you're a lady, maybe another five for the hair. Yeah. Would you agree with the five yeah, minutes? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I wash my hair every yeah. day. The, uh, Do you wash your hair every day? I wash my hair every day, Malcolm. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then you put it back on the dummy. Yeah, and then I put it back on the little thing on the shelf. Uh, the, the, the demon is uh, not young ladies, but it's, it's young men. Uh, say from 13, teenagers between 13 and 30. Those teenagers. <laughs> okay, spend a lot that. of time. They all well, spend a half an hour on the shower, easy. What about dripping taps, though? Mm. Um, mm. Does that make a difference if the taps are dripping? Uh, if you've got one drip for one second, that's uh, a thousand litres a, uh, a month. So that's hot about water. three or four tanks of water. Good what, grief. If, if that was a hot water uh, with a storage tank, mm. you'd be slowly uh, depleting your Yeah, we've heated the water and now it's dripping out. So every time you fill the tank, that's mm. another five or six dollars to heat the tank up. Mm. So if you're using, say, if you're losing three or four tanks of water over the quarter, Mm. Um, that's probably another $30, $40 mm. to your bill. That's one little drip. Well, that's very interesting mm. stuff. Leith, just stay with us because mm -hmm. we're about to meet Jeff, Jeff the dog to find out what Jeff the dog is doing for the South Australian Police, which mm. is all, um, which is really interesting to find out. Jeff's waiting, paint, uh, Patient, panting please. madly <laughs> over there in the corner. <laughs> so we'll meet them late, uh, shortly and we'll see you at the end of the show. Thank you, Malcolm and Janice. Janice, As there's a policeman here. And <laughs> what did you do wrong? No, I didn't. What did you do wrong? No, nothing, nothing, <laughs> nothing. No, we have a special guest, uh, Senior Sergeant Susan O'Connor. Welcome to the program. Thank you And you've me. brought a special friend along, as I we have. said. But talk about why you're here in the first place. So we're here today to um, promote our new dog, Jeff, and also to talk a little bit about road safety, particularly for children. And that's because th there's been a whole new redevelopment of that area yeah, that where has. teachers and families can come? Yeah, so we have the Road Safety Centre which is located at um, our police barracks on Jail Road, Port Road, um, at Devon and there next to Benighton Park. Jail, 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 Jail Road. Road. Jail Road. Jail Road is now, quite funny. for people not in <laughs> South Australia... <laughs> um, it's a real road. It is a real road. <laughs> but for people in other parts of Australia, yeah. similar programs exist all around the country. They do. This is just one that's here in South Australia. Yep. And you've made a whole lot of videos, haven't you, to sort of explain what this is all about. We have. So Jeff is featuring in all of our new road safety videos. Well, let's so take a look at one. Let's that's do the that. best way to explain. <laughs> I'm Susan and I'm a police officer here at the Road Safety Centre and this is my very best friend, Jeff the Road Safety Dog. Say hello, Jeff. At the Road Safety Centre, children come to learn about road safety and then ride on our mock roadway. We're going to be talking about road safety because it can be dangerous whenever there are cars or other traffic. So if we're at home in the driveway, out in the street or travelling in a car, there are some special things that we can tell you about how to keep you safe. We will talk to you about safe places to play. You should play in your backyard, at the park, and never play behind cars or on the road. We will show you how to cross the road safely and how to do the curb drill. We will also show you how to be a good passenger. You must always wear your seatbelt properly. We will talk to you about bike safety. You must always wear a helmet when you ride a bike, scooter, skateboard, rollerblades or roller skates. We hope you learn a lot and we look forward to seeing you soon at the Road Safety Centre. Don't forget, road safety rules. So you were the star? That was you. Uh, Unfortunately, yes. There so are several clips, but that one was me. Oh, so it's, it's not you on all the clips? No, then? we've used all of our staff throughout all of the clips so that the children get uh, to see, I guess, different people talking about road safety. Mm. So if I went... <laughs> no, I can't do you it. You can't can do that. I, can you do one of, no, can I you can't. Do one of those? No, I can't, but I can no. call Jeff one if you'd like please. to call now. Please, Jeff, please, please, please. let's go. Come on in, Jeff. Jeff's, oh. Jeff's a big... <laughs> Jeff, it's a big guy. I always get high cuddles five, from Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> okay. Okay. Other high five. <laughs> oh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. OK. OK, no punching. Oh, it's I do no, have to no, control no, Jeff just, sometimes. Oh, really? <laughs> well, dogs are a bit like that. Be good, we're on TV. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what are the main things, Jeff, that you want to get across to people? So, um, you want me to talk for you? 
Okay, so usually for children when they come into the Road Safety Centre, we like to um, concentrate on the stop, look, listen, think. Yes. So we really want kids to be thinking, particularly Which around cars. So we want them, you can do it. Ready? Yes. Stop, look, listen, and think. <laughs> Comes That's with the dance. <laughs> what happened to look to the left and right? And well, we do talk to them about... They're, they're the key messages. So we, Jeff's got them here on his T-shirt. Mm -hmm. So they're the key messages for our kids. They're short, very concise messages. We want them to remember those. But when we're talking about those things, there's a whole spiel that goes with them. And it is look to the left, look to the right, all those other messages that we grew up with as kids. Do, uh, yeah, that's really important. It is. Because I guess this is a new way to educate young people as they grow up. It is. And it's really important that we get them in early to start talking about pedestrian and bike safety with them. So Absolutely. this is done through schools? Yeah, so we have the Road Safety Centre and there is a mock track there. So parents are most welcome to come down on weekends or okay. when the track's not used by us. We yep. have the lights operating on weekends now. So they can come down and use the track. And as actually a family? Tour, as a family. We have yep. lots oh, of birthday parties thing. there on the weekends. So people come down and have birthday parties. We've also got the school sessions where schools can book in for free and bring the kids in on an excursion. Yep. But we also now run a school holiday program. So us as Safe Hole will have children come in and the parents drop them off. So those right. that schools that don't participate, children can still come down and be part of our program. What well, oh, a great fantastic. idea. Yeah. That's but that's really every there would be youth groups and we do youth groups, we do scouts, we do a whole array of community groups of that come in and do, oh. do events at our centre. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, so is there a program for people who've just learnt to drive but still don't get it right? Are you talking about seniors or are you talking about high school students? Well, actually, <laughs> that's a very valid we have, point. It's really important with road safety education. We have touch points throughout people's lives. So we do start with the preschool, but we go all the way through to senior school presentations. Sorry, not senior school presentations, but we also have senior, senior. presentations. So we do community all the way through from tiny little kids up until when people are contemplating giving up their licence and stopping driving. It's, it's more about, I suppose, preventative education when you think about yeah, it. Yeah, it? it is. Yeah, it's yeah. really important. Our road toll, you know, we had the lowest road toll last year um, in a forever. Yep. Um, this year we're sitting at 25 fatalities so far this year. Mm. So 25 people aren't coming home to their family and they're everything from small kids through to, you know, older yeah. people. So it's really it's... important that we get the messages through. Mm. Absolutely. Janice, when did you, though, re-look at the road rules again? I haven't. Because, like... No, our, it is really tricky. Well, here in South Australia, the Royal Automobile Association, he says, as his voice is slowly failing him, um, put out the changes in road rules. Um, and I always read them because some of the things I think, do I know about that or not? Is that something I really understand? Yeah. Is and that it, something that comes... Through yeah. the mail, though? Like... No, it, I guess it's up to... Sometimes those things are advertised in media and other times it's just up for people to learn them. So we offer programs for parents, particularly those who are starting to teach their children to drive. Because mm. as a parent, um, you think you know it all and yes. then you go and sit those tests again, you do the mock tests exactly. online yeah. with people and you realise that you Didn't probably that don't right. know as much as what you think you know. So that's it's really important that parents right. refresh like. as well yeah. when they start teaching children how to drive. So whilst kids can't exactly drive, yep. how, how does this work on the course? So what they do is they come into our centre and they'll spend some time in our classroom um situation with our road safety educators where they'll see all of Jeff's videos and Jeff goes through all sorts of things like <laughs> how to wear their seatbelt correctly, um, how to play safely near a road. Um, you Do you know. have to wear makeup, Jeff, for this? No, Jeff's got no makeup. Jeff does have a bike helmet, so when Jeff wants to go out on the oh, track and ride oh. a bike, which uh, do. Jeff has done before, Excellent. it's important that he has his helmet on as well. Yep. So um, yep. it's really important that we sort of do that. So there's a whole session that goes on in the classroom and then we take the children out to the track and they learn how to be good pedestrians on the track as well because yeah. um, that's also important and then yeah. they get to ride around and obey all of our stop signs and our red lights and our... So what do they ride? Bikes that we supply. Okay. So we've got everything from little tricycles yep. for kids who don't know how to ride properly all the way through to um, full-size adult bikes. Oh, OK. Right. Yeah, because we also have a lot of um, new arrival students come into who have not not familiar with our road rules. There's something that we would never think well, no, of. No, and that, some of those people have never ridden bikes. So yes. we have adult tricycles, we have disabled groups come in. So they come in and, and just get familiar with being in a road environment. Yeah. Um, so that familiarisation for them is really important. So it would be really wise wherever you are in Australia just to check with your local police if this means something to you. Like if you've got children or a group, Run a scout group. Scout group. Yeah. Church groups. Yeah. Any, any, we take any group. Anyone that wants to come and listen about road safety, we're happy to, to have them come in and listen. Because it's preventative, isn't it? That's it is. really what we're talking about here. And it's important to have those, those touch point messages throughout someone's life. How so long have you been doing this? 
the it's school in general. So Jeff is new. Jeff only joined us last year. So Jeff... Um, he's a big puppy. He is a big puppy. He's very much like our German Shepherd police dog puppy. So um, yeah. Jeff's been with us since the middle of last year and uh, has been making appearances all across the state, doing all sorts of crazy things, really. <laughs> um, but he's now the feature of our program, so he does star in all of our videos and Yay. carry on. Um, as you can see, loves the limelight, small. does Jeff. <laughs> um, so we've but road safety education's been done in this state for since the 70s, the school's been up and running, but it was sort of, I guess, redone, relocated in, uh, and reopened in 2013. And this is great for the little East. It is. Something, something new, like something this. fresh for them to see, and yeah. they really do love Jeff and love the cuddles and love oh, the photos. So, um, yes. <laughs> oh, Jeff. Hey, come over here, Jeff. Come over Go here. Go over there. Because um, <laughs> we, we can pose for a photo. Yeah. <laughs> Quick, take your screenshot now. <laughs> Fabulous Janice, your turn. Quick, oh, take your screenshot okay. now. Quick, Here quick, we quick, go. Quick. Yay! <laughs> oh, I never saw your tail before. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big Jeff, tail. Jeff tends to knock people Come out on. with the tail. Yes. Come Come out out out. Out. Uh, yeah. Look, thank you so much. And, and thank you. we'd really like to thank the police department here in South yeah. Australia because having um, the availability of people like yourself to come and explain mm. simple things that we don't always, as a society, know about. No, that's true. No, and it's really hard to get the message across yeah. with a whole lot of things. Yeah. And next time we have the police here, we're going to be talking about some cyber security and stuff that most of us are starting to be inundated with constantly and you sort of start to worry, how did that person get my email address? Who are they? Uh, I don't even yeah, know they are. Because no. yeah. there's a lot of issues there going is on there issues. as well. But look, thank you so much, Jeff. Uh, there's a bowl of water and an <laughs> old bone over there for you. Yeah, no, you look too me. pretty for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. Well, thank you for having us. Thank you. And we'll be back. Oh, stay with us, though. We'll be back with Leith Jarvis with just one more tip on saving water, water, power, power. Or, you know, all of those things. <laughs> See you in the tip. Welcome back. Well, interesting. Well, yeah, it has been an interesting nice. program, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. So, Leith, uh, there is an energy rating, particularly for gas, isn't there? What should we look for? Yeah, the gas only, not the electric. This has, is with hot water. With hot water about. only, we're talking at this yeah. stage. Uh, you get at least a five-star rating, five yeah. to six-star. And it'll so look like this? It'll look like that, and it be, should be on the frame of the, the heater. So, if it's less than that, is it don't buy? Well, it's going to use more energy to get your hot water. It's going to cost you more to run. To so it might be a cheaper unit. Could be. With less stars. Mm. Right, so gotcha. The more stars, the better. And um, people who would like to be part of this with their kids or with groups of kids, what should they do? So if they want to bring their children in themselves, they can um, come down any time and use the uh, mock roadway when it's not in use by Safe Hole members. Um, for the school holiday program, they can check out Safe Hole social media sites and any school's welcome to come in and book um, as they usually do and bring their children down as part of an excursion. If you've just uh, checked in, <laughs> this is Jeff. <laughs> Our puppy, yeah. our new puppy. <laughs> <laughs> Who grew very fast. <laughs> and it, it's the easiest way to find you through the website? Yeah, so if you go to the SAPOL website um, and just type in road safety, um, our, all our details pop up with when we can, when you can come down and do a session and, and have a look at us. Right. And, of course, if you're in Melbourne or Perth or anywhere else in Australia, just make sure that you check your local police because they'll have something very similar to this. Because yeah. everyone's thinking the same way, educate young. Educate young and keep the education going throughout everyone's lives. Fantastic. Thank you. It's Even been us. Good. Even yes. us. Yes. Well, well, I haven't driven with you for a long time. <laughs> what are you saying? Perhaps you better drive the car home and <laughs> check it out. <laughs> well, so until next time... Yes, take care of yourself. Keep yourself nice till then and thanks to our special guests. First, you must stop. Then, you must look. And you must also listen and think.